Hey, what's going on everybody? Dan here, coming with uh, another video for you guys. This has been a much anticipated, much requested video. I'm hoping this one isn't too boring, um, but like I said, it's been requested, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to spice this up. We're just going to see how this goes. So this is all about uh, vehicle weights, trailer weights, uh, gross vehicle weight, towing, tongue weight, uh, kingpin weight, you name it. Anything weight related. Uh, I did a video earlier this year uh, called Trucks, Trailers, and Towing Yikes, which, which is doing really well. You should check it out. Link down below. Um, where I kind of talk broad about it. And at the time, Sarah and I had a Sierra 1500 uh, extended cab vehicle. So I was talking about the Sierra 1500, my experience with how to find out exactly how much your specific vehicle could tow, resources you could use, um, going online, uh, going to the vehicle manufacturer and getting on online chat, the glove box, all those good things. I kind of skimmed through gross vehicle weight, curb weight, dry weight, tongue weight, all that other stuff. And I've had numerous people reach out and say, damn, when are you going to do part two of your trucks, trailers, towing, yikes? Sometime here soon, I've got part three planned already. I know it took me forever to do part two. Now I already have part three planned. But I'm actually going over to Walnut Ridge Service Center. They have all of the different weight distribution and anti-sway controls like set up on a display. So... That'll be number three. We're going to get into weight distribution, anti-sway, why it's important, when you need it, when you don't need it, and hopefully dispel some, some myths around that. This one, like I said, might be a little more cut and dry, but you know, you'll know you see in a lot of my videos now when I'm doing trailer tours, I'll just immediately put the dry weight of the camper on there. Uh, why is that important? What do you need to know about that? These are things that when Sarah and I originally bought our travel trailer, we were frantic about. It seemed like rocket science, like we were never going to understand it. And I come to find out that it's much more uh, simple than that. It's just you have to pay attention. So we're just going to dive right in. Hopefully it's not too boring. Hold on. The first one we're going to talk about is GVW can't talk tonight. GVW, gross vehicle weight. So gross vehicle weight is the actual weight of the fully loaded vehicle or trailer, including all your cargo, fluids, passengers, optional equipment, as measured by a scale. And you'll hear me reference a lot measured by a scale. You never really 100% know until you go to a scale. Uh, a lot of the big truck stops have them. I also know, funny enough, the place that I went to was a waste management place where you can, or a trash dump place. They actually have scales there. So anyway, the GVW is important because without this number, you cannot determine if you're within the limits set forth by the manufacturer's laws and regulations. This number can be approximately based on information provided by the manufacturer or dealer, but again, the only way to be sure is to drive your RV on a scale and measure it. This is something important to know uh, when you're looking at this because you can, in fact, be pulled over when you're going down the road. In some instances, what it's it's still unsafe but it may be towable you may be able to do it um you're you're probably tearing up your vehicle and doing it but there's no immediate uh reaction from the vehicle when you're when you're towing too much or towing incorrectly however you can be pulled over you can be taken to uh or at least in indiana you can you can be taken to a weight station and you can actually be fine so this is something very important to pay attention to as well as just for the safety and peace of mind for you and your family and a pleasurable experience when you're out camping during the summer the next thing we're going to talk about is actually the GVWR, which is the Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. So we had GVW, Gross Vehicle Weight. Now we have the Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. So what is that? Gross Vehicle Weight Rating is the maximum number that the GVW or GTW should never exceed. GVWR is applied to trailers as well as vehicles. Uh, again, these are important when you're talking your 
truck weight and your camper weight, they both have a GVWR that you cannot or should not exceed. So we're going to talk soon about uh, dry weight and then we're going to talk about gross vehicle total weight. So your dry, uh, I'll give you for instance, our Puma is 7,800 pounds dry and I believe the gross vehicle weight rating is like 9,200 pounds. So when you start adding dishes and, and clothes and a washer and dryer and all this stuff, you know, you start getting towards not only the limits of what the trailer itself, the axles, the tires, the, the, the foundation can handle, but also what ability your vehicle has for pulling that. Um, you may say, oh, my truck pulls 7,800 pounds and my camper 7,200 pounds, I'm fine. But what if you start adding stuff in it? It's easy to get five, six, seven, eight hundred 800 pounds worth of stuff in your vehicle. Okay, so next we have GCW, gross combined weight. What is that? Gross combined weight is the actual weight of the fully loaded tow vehicle plus the towed vehicle, trailer, car, boat, whatever, including all cargo, fluids, passengers, and optional equipment. Again, the only way to accurately determine your GCW is to drive the entire assembly onto a scale so you can make sure. But the gross combined weight is the total weight of your truck, the total weight of your travel trailer, your fifth wheel, your boat, your um, gooseneck trailer combined together. That is your gross combined weight. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting a little bit of a theme here. The next one, which I'm going to cheat because I'll say it wrong, is the GCWR, which is the gross combined weight rating. So what is that? The gross combined weight rating is the maximum number the tow vehicle plus the towed vehicle or travel trailer should never exceed. So that's going to tell you what both of those things combined together, what the maximum they can, that they can exceed is or cannot exceed. God, I can't talk tonight. So... You may have a 6,000 pound vehicle, a 7,000 pound travel trailer, so you're at 13,000 pounds, and your GCWR may be 15,000 pounds. And I'm just throwing arbitrary numbers out there so you can see. So that's where you know you have like 2,000 pounds to play with, whether that's human bodies in the vehicle, that's uh, your pets, I have fat corgis as you guys know, that's uh, luggage, all of that good stuff, that all factors into that GCWR. Another biggie, and I think uh, a commonly overlooked one, is tongue weight or kingpin weight. So tongue weight is the actual weight pressing down on the hitch ball by the trailer. The recommended amount of tongue weight is 10 to 15% of your GTW, okay? Kingpin weight, also called pin weight, is the actual weight pressing down on the fifth wheel hitch by the trailer. The recommended amount of kingpin weight, king pin weight is 15 to 25% of your GTW. Going back, don't forget GTW is your gross trailer weight. So you want... Um, 10 to 15 percent of your gross trailer weight to be your actual tongue weight on your camper. Um, we are uh, we have a 7,800 pound travel trailer, our Puma, and we're at 1,100 pounds tongue weight. So you can do the math there. So as if we haven't had enough of these, hang in there. We're getting close. Hopefully the illustrations are helping as well as the text, and they're saving you from looking at this the whole time. Now we're going to talk about curb weight. So what is curb weight? Curb weight includes the vehicle weight with standard equipment, your fuel tank weight, your fresh water tanks weight, propane tanks, uh, equipment, fluids, all that stuff. Curb weight is the actual weight of a vehicle or the trailer, including all standard equipment, full fuel tanks, full fresh water tanks, full propane tanks, and all other equipment fluids being full. Okay? So... Uh, that's another thing that you need to really pay close attention to how the manufacturer defines the curb weight because this can often be used to calculate other weights such as cargo carrying capacity or payload. Okay, so hang in there. We're getting close. We're getting down there and we're going to tie it all together, okay? The next thing we need to talk about is dry weight and you will see me time and time again when I'm doing these trailer tours I'm always telling you what the dry weight is and that's an important number to know that's that to me 
when you're going camper shopping, number one, you should know what your max tow capacity is on your, your vehicle. You should also know your gross vehicle weight rating um, for your truck. Because then when you go camper shopping and you look at dry weight and then you look at your maximum weight on that, you can start to begin to put a picture together of, can I safely tow this? A lot of people go by an 80-20 rule that don't exceed over 80% of your tow capacity. I've heard other people say, that's crap, you can tow up to 100%. I, I don't know. When we were in our 1500 Sierra, our tow capacity was 9,400 pounds. Our trailer dry weight was 7,800 pounds. So with all the stuff in it, we were probably 83, 8,400 pounds. We pulled all the way down to Gulf Shores, Alabama and back, zero problems. Crappy gas mileage, but zero problems. We were over that 80-20. Um, but I, maybe a good rule of thumb is 80-20. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. And, and, you know, again, one of the problems and what I ran into when we first got into this was I didn't know what I was comfortable with. It was my first travel trailer. I'd never really towed anything that big. I was terrified. All of these numbers scared the crap out of me, hence me making a video about it. So... Dry weight is the actual weight of a vehicle or trailer containing all the standard equipment without fuel, fluids, cargo, passengers, or optional equipment. So you need to pay close attention to how the manufacturer defines dry weight because this is often used to calculate other weights such as cargo capacity, blah, 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 blah. Now something important to remember, going back to that whole 80-20 and already knowing what your vehicle can do before you get there. Let's say that um, the camper you're looking at is a 7,800 pound dry weight, okay? So that means your propane tanks are empty, your water tanks are empty, your grays, your blacks, uh, your fresh water tank. You don't have anything in there at all and you're at 7,800 pounds. And then you have a towing vehicle that can only pull 8,100 pounds. So chances are if you have to fill with fresh water before you leave because of your boondocking or wherever you're going or now you've filled your propane tanks you've added a washer dryer all this other stuff you've now hit your i mean you're at max of what you can tow so that that dry weight is a great base but don't just take that as the only thing you need to consider in order to tow safely, successfully, a lot of factors go in. And it's really, honestly, once you get it all dialed in, it's a very enjoyable experience. Um, I remember my first couple of times white knuckling and going down the road, and now, you know, I'm not, I'm not laxed in my driving, but I'm relaxed in my driving. I'm, I'm, not, as, I'm not as afraid of it anymore. Um, so, let's get back to the list. So we're also gonna talk about the UVW, which is the unloaded vehicle weight. What does that mean? Unloaded vehicle weight is the weight of a vehicle as manufactured at the factory. It includes full engine and generator fuel tanks and fluids, if applicable. It does not include cargo water, propane, or dealer installed accessories. Beware that some manufacturers weigh each unit to determine UVW while others provide only the average or estimated weight for these models. I don't pay attention to the UVW, I probably should. Again, I look at that dry weight, that's where I set my base for everything, that and my gross vehicle weight combined. Um, next, we have cargo weight. Cargo weight is the actual weight of all the items added to the curb weight of the vehicle or trailer. This includes personal cargo, optional equipment, and tongue or kingpin weight. This number is important because it will determine how many things you can safely pack into your RV. Within this number, you need to fit the weight of your clothes, shoes, linens, books, dishes, beer, cleaning supplies, all that good stuff. Um, yes and no. Um, I think, you know, you get a little lost up in these terms. I think it's important to understand them, especially when you go to a dealer and you start talking these things. If you go to a good dealer, which we did, um, they're going to talk you through all this and they're honestly, if it's a good dealer, they're not going to put you in something that's unsafe. They're not going to try to upsell you into a, into a bigger camper than you can pull. Where you're, I think you run into the problems is if you don't understand these things and you think you can pull something bigger than you actually can, which, you know, can happen.
Okay, guys, so I threw a lot of terms at you. You're probably eyes gazed over, you're numb, you're thinking, why did I ever follow this guy? But I think these are important things, especially for those beginners out there, to understand, to not necessarily to completely memorize. I certainly still don't have it memorized. I have a firm grasp, and when they talk about those things, you know, if someone says, what's your gross vehicle weight? I know what they're talking about. What's your curb weight? You know, what's your tongue weight? I know all these things. These are things that you can arm yourself with when you do go to look at a travel trailer or a fifth wheel so you don't feel so overwhelmed, you know. There's tons of knobs and buttons and things that you have to learn already. Anything you can do to lessen the stress of can I do this? You should do it because camping is supposed to be fun and it is fun. Um, we had a blast this last year. This last year was our first year of camping. I'm so excited for spring, 118 days away. Um, but yeah, arm yourself with the knowledge that you need before you go in there so you can, you can take one less uh, worry with you when you're looking at these things. And again, make it a, make it a great experience. So, Thanks for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you haven't hit the unsubscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so right down below. Also go ahead and give this video a like. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything that I went over. If I said something wrong, which I hope I didn't, but if I did, point it out to me. I'd love to hear from you guys. And uh